most, if not all, Christian churches, quote unquote, um, preach the Lord Jesus Christ. But not all, not even most, are stable in Christ. Hi everyone, my name is Francis Simeon, and you are watching uh, the Pauline Fellowship Bible Study Hour. Uh, today, we are talking about the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. But before that, before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe and also uh, hit that bell so you know whenever there's a brand new video that drops. Uh, this video is also being recorded just in its audio form uh, for our podcast, The Workman and the Shame. So if you or your friends or, you know, people who would be willing to, to listen, but they don't have the time, you may go to Apple, uh, Spotify, Amazon or Google or wherever you get, where, wherever you download your podcast and uh, make sure to like, subscribe and listen. You can uh, you know, you can listen while you're at work or commuting or doing your gardening or things like that. Um, before we go forward, also, I would like to say uh, welcome to everyone who's listening. We know, I know we have a lot of people that are listening from, of course, the U.S., a lot of people listening uh, from the Philippines, uh, also different countries around the world. For you, uh, to you that are just now starting to listen, uh, hey, welcome aboard. I hope that and pray that this Bible study and the rest will be a blessing to you. Um, we also have breaking news. Um, same thing. Uh, we, this is the same breaking news that we have last uh, last time we were on. Uh, if you remember, we started our um, Bible studies or Bible stories for little children, and that comes out every Sunday afternoon or Monday morning. And uh, the design of that is if you have kids, uh, some people I know, uh, they use it for their classes and they teach in public schools. Um, in the Philippines, I'd like to say hi to you, uh, Miss Nancy uh, and, and uh, other of her colleagues who are also using the Bible stories. I hope it's, this is a blessing to you. But hey, if, uh, you, you know, if you have children... Um, if you have classes like that, or if you want to use this for your Sunday school, this you are more than welcome to use uh, these Bible stories, and I hope it's a blessing to you. All right, back to our topic for today, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Um, like I said earlier, a lot of people would say, if not all the "Quote unquote Christian churches today would say, we preach Jesus Christ, but there's the correct way, there's the correct Jesus Christ that uh, that we should be preaching right now, or preaching that we should be listening to right now. We can't just uh, uh, grab stories of Jesus Christ from, say, for example, here and there, and expect." us to be stable in God, especially if we are grabbing from the wrong program. So here it is. I hope it's a blessing to you. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Now our verse is in Romans 16, 25. Um, the Bible says, Now to him that is of power to establish, watch that word, establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Uh, to continue the, the verse for context, but now, verse 26, is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God, only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. 
verse 26 and 27. Now going back to verse number 25, again now to him that is of power to establish, uh, I, I mentioned earlier to pay attention to that word, what do you think is the root word of establish? Okay. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept se secret since the world began. And I just wanted to read that slower. But going back to the word establish, Webster's 1828 American Dictionary of the English Language language defines the word establish as to fix. Are you fixed in Christ, in God? A, to settle in a state of permanence. Are you settled in God? Are you fixed, permanent? Are you fixed, are you settled in God? To make firm. Are you firm in Him? Are you firm in your beliefs now i've been to churches where um a lot of the members have um uh, you know have professed to be believers or to be christians or even said to be or professed to be saved for even longer than i have been alive but um some of them have reached out to me and said, how come I am? I, I feel like I'm wavering in my faith? Or how come I feel like I doubt my salvation? Or how come this or that? I just am not sure. They are not stable. Okay. Now going back to our verse over here, not to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Of course, we know that to him in verse number 27 is that is God. He has the power to make you stable. But for him to be able to do that, okay, to establish you, to make you stable, to fix you, to 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 uh um make sure that you're in a permanent state uh to stand that make sure that you're standing firm in order for him to do that you have to start somewhere and that is according to my gospel who is that my what is uh what is that pr uh, pronoun my uh pointing to that's the apostle paul the speaker so that's the first thing okay for you to be stable, you have to start with the Apostle Paul's gospel. That's, of course, we've, we've been talking about that for the last uh, three months, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing, it does not stand there. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. Now... Um, a lot of churches, a lot of so-called Christian churches uh, will say that, well, we preach Christ. So there's no problem there. Ah, ah, ah. It does not stop there now, does it? Preach Christ how or in what way? Okay. How do you preach Christ? In what way do you preach Christ? Okay. Now it says, according to the revelation of the mystery. What does this point to? Preach Christ, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. Now, so those are the two things, according to Romans 16, 25, that are needed for people to be stable. Number one, you have to start with Paul's gospel. If you do not believe that, if you are wrong with the gospel, then you will be wrong everywhere else. See? That's the foundation. And then after that, you build on that foundation 
by providing yourself or by studying or by listening to the preaching or whenever you do preach to other people, uh, the, you preach the preaching of Jesus Christ, but not just Jesus Christ. Some people will say, well, I preach Jesus Christ. I preach the, you know, some people even go as far as say, well, I preach the whole counsel of God. You see? does not say that now, does it? It says, preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Okay? Now, this sort of reminds me of another verse in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verses 3 and 4. I'd like you to compare uh, and consider. The Bible says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will... So we're talking about the will of God here. What is God's will? Who will have, number one, all men to be saved. And number two, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So it doesn't stop there now, see? Some churches, if they even get the gospel right, stop there. You know, hopefully they do. But if they do, they stop there. There's no more learning. It's all just downhill. It's all just entertainment and, and the feels and, and emotions and stuff like that. Right? But see, don't stop there. The will of God is for all men to be saved. And then when you're done there, when you've praised God, gotten saved... To come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, notice the parallelism. Notice the similarities here. Number one, what's the will of God? Who will have all men to be saved. Number two, to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Remember what we were talking about earlier? See, God's will, uh, you know, in Romans 16, uh, verse 25, it's talking about how to be stable. And there's two things, two prerequisites. Number one, start with Paul's gospel. And number two, once you're saved, you have to have the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. If you're just listening to generic preaching of Jesus Christ from all, from here and there, and it's just, it's just a mess, it's not like how the Apostle Paul says it, then, then, then you won't be stable. I'm sorry. I know. I know this is not popular, but this is what the Bible says in Romans sixteen twenty five. How do you be stable? How how do you become stable? That you start by being saved, and you get saved by accepting or by believing in First Corinthians, uh, fifteen. Verses 1 to 4, Paul's gospel. And then after that, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. The parallelism in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse uh, 4, is that God's will is for all men to be saved. And then after that, to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Right? So that's our way of introduction. Uh, just sort of talking about those verses. Uh, as you can see, to be stable, God wants us to be saved. That's his will. God wants us to be saved and also to grow in him, if you will. But we don't just grow. We don't just learn by just grabbing any from everywhere in the Bible and applying those things which are not for us into our time today. Okay? We have to learn the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to follow him. But what Lord Jesus Christ? The Lord Jesus Christ according to his ministry in the flesh? No. The Lord Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So uh, in this Bible study, we will talk about three things. The first one is, what is the revelation of the mystery? Well, uh we're also going to talk about the mystery. Some people don't know the mystery. What about, you know, much less the revelation of the mystery? Number two, we're going to talk about our pattern preacher. 
We know that the Apostle Paul is our pattern for our salvation to them that believe. Uh, uh, but he's also our pattern preacher. And then last but not the least, we will talk about some examples to consider. We'll take a look at some examples to, in the Bible. Now, there's so many examples, we just don't have time. So we'll just look at a few of them. Okay, so let's talk about the revelation of the mystery. Okay, so uh, the best verse to come to, to go to when we talk about the mystery, the definition of the mystery, or uh, or the content of this mystery, um, uh, it, obviously, well, the definition of the word mystery is hidden wisdom. Okay, but. The content of what mystery we're talking about is found in Ephesians chapter number 3. So let's read that. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, verse number 1, uh, uh, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, uh, of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word. It was given to Paul, to us word. Okay, Gentiles, how that by, oh, there it is, revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. Okay, by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote the four and few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. We're going to define this revelation, or we're going to look at that later on. What does that revelation mean? How was it revealed to him? Okay, did uh, sparrows come down with uh, papyrus and vellum with the writings of the finger of God? No, we're 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 going to talk about this here later on. Was he pre? Was did he sit in the the feet of Peter? And Peter expounded to him what God wanted him to do. That's not, uh, that's not how it happened. But we're going to discuss that later on. Moving on, verse number five. Which in other ages, now focus, go back with me, think with me here. This mystery, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Okay, notice that no other person knew this mystery in other ages until it was made known or revealed to the Apostle Paul. Okay? So as soon as it was revealed to the Apostle Paul, then he, it was given to him to us word. So after it was revealed to him, he revealed it to us. That's why it says, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What is the, the content? What is the mystery? that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Can you imagine that? Praise God. Now, in the prophecy program, we were, if you will, second-class citizens. We were just an afterthought, if you will. But now, you know, uh, if you read the Bible, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel without hope. But now, it was, uh, you remember Reptevia in uh, The Fiddler on the Roof? It's unheard of. It's insane that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, right? They wouldn't even as much as eat or break bread with Gentiles. In the new in 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 the Gospels, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ wouldn't even uh, talk to to the 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 Canaanite woman until um, she said that uh, the crumbs of bread I know I'm paraphrasing falls from the table and, and the dogs eat it. Okay, reading continue it continues whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So there are things that we learn from the from what we just read in Ephesians number uh, chapter number three. 
All right? What are these things that we learn? Number one, the dispensation of the grace of God was given to Paul to us word. It was not given to Peter, not any of the dis not not any of the disciples or the apostles when the Lord Jesus Christ was alive. It was given to Paul, the apostle Paul. That's why he is our apostle. It was given to him to us word. Okay? He did not keep it to himself. It did not remain a secret when it was revealed to Paul. He 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 he, uh, he preached it and shared it to us word. Number two, by revelation, God made known unto Paul the ministry. Or the, sorry, the mystery. By revelation, God made known unto Paul the mystery. I'm just copying and pasting the language of uh, the verses. Okay. Number three, no other son of man knew about this mystery before Paul. Not Peter, not John the Baptist, none of the apostles until it was revealed to Paul. See, we're going to go back even further. Not even Abraham, not even Isaac, not even Jacob. Not even Moses, not even King David, not even Solomon, not even Daniel. It was hidden in God until he was ready to reveal it to the Apostle Paul. Okay? If he, if there's no other way around it. You just have to believe what the Bible says. If we're going to take it as it says, and we will, because the Bible is true whether we like it or not, whether we take it or not, we derive the following things. Number one, to say that they all have the same information is wrong. Peter and Paul did not have the same information. Number two, to say that they all had the same gospel is wrong. The gospel of Peter is different from the gospel of Paul. So if you take your doctrine from the writings of Peter, then that's you're, you're in danger. Because our gospel is the gospel of Paul. Ah, it's coming to picture here now, huh? Next, to say that they all preach Jesus Christ the same way, is wrong. Now, if we said it this way, okay, they all preach Jesus Christ. That's true. But did they preach Jesus Christ the same way? No. Because Peter preached the Lord Jesus Christ, especially before the cross, as the king that they have to receive. Uh, so the earthly kingdom of priests can be ex established. Paul, on the other hand, preached the Lord Jesus Christ crucified and talked about his cross work or his work in the cross. Okay? To say that they all preach Jesus Christ the same way is wrong. To say that they all have the same commission is wrong. Okay? Peter and the apostles were sent to a different group of people as Paul is sent to a different group of people. Now, if you get, you know, if you get your commission from the commission given to, the, to Peter and the apostles in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and not the commission given to Paul, then you, friend, are in grave danger. Let's move forward. Hopefully, um, hopefully, the the following statements, verses, and lessons in this lesson would answer some more of your question. Last but not the least, what we learn from Ephesians chapter number three. The content of this mystery is, quote, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Okay? That is 
the content of that mystery. Now, let's look, let's look at another verse in Galatians chapter number 1. I'm going to start verse number 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me. So we're going to go back. Remember, there's two things that will make us stable. Number one is the gospel of Paul. And number two is the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. Now, we're going to go back to that gospel just so it get, so I can show you or the Bible can show us how it was revealed to him and uh, the gospel was revealed to him and uh, to the Apostle Paul and also the mystery was reve revealed to him. So let's take a look at that. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men, after man. For I neither receive it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Notice your prepositions, right? After man and of man. It was a gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither receive it of man, neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. Neither I receive it of man, neither I was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. In verse number 13, or sorry, number 15, I jumped. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his, there it is again, reveal, reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. See, the commission of Paul is to preach, uh, to preach to the Gentiles. Of course, uh, if you read the, in the Book of Acts, there's uh, other things there as well. But um, Peter and the apostles were not sent to the Gentiles. We'll see that later on. But the apostle Paul is that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Okay, see? So, so we're seeing, remember earlier I said we're going to look at how these things were revealed to Paul. It was not taught to him. He was not even close to anyone who was flesh and blood, to any people. He did not even go to Jerusalem where all the apostles were. He went to Arabia. After he was in the wilderness in Arabia, he returned again into Damascus. And then even after that, after three years I went up to Jerusalem and talked to Peter. Okay, so what do we learn from Galatians chapter number one? Number one, Paul did not preach after man. Remember, I said, watch the pre preposition. So that means he did not pattern his preaching after anyone. See? Next, Paul did not receive his information from any man. Paul was not taught by flesh and blood. Now remember, before Paul was saved, he was Saul, right? And everyone hung their, uh, the, the people who stoned Stephen to death um, laid their coats in the Apostle Paul's feet, right? So that means he was, if you will, the, the, the commissioner of the, the stoners. <laughs> he was the one who, who, who arranged the project manager, if you will. The, the chief, not prosecutor, the chief persecutor of the Church of God, which is back then during, during that time still the, uh, the uh, kingdom church. Um, the kingdom church has the gospel of the kingdom and therefore the people are earthly uh, they were looking for 
a uh, literal earthly kingdom of priests to happen. They were looking for the Messiah to come from earth to heaven and to rule and reign here on earth. Now, that's not what we're looking for now, is it? We're looking for our head to come catch us away, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, uh, the kingdom church, earthly. Church, which is the body of Christ, heavenly. Now, Paul used to be the chief persecutor of the kingdom church. And this was the little flock, and therefore they were very knowledgeable in the law. Paul did not have, you know, some people would say, well, they had the same, same, um, same information and gospel. Well, see, why would Paul say, why would Paul write Ephesians chapter number three if he knew the law? Remember, he was a student of Gamaliel and he was a Pharisee. He knew the law. He knew, uh, he knew what he was persecuting against. That's why nobody had to teach it to him. That's why nobody had nobody else before him was his pattern. Nobody gave it to him. He was not taught by flesh and blood. Paul was not taught by Peter or the apostles. They had different information. Paul went to the wilderness of Arabia and it took years before he saw Peter. Okay? Paul received his information by the revelation of Jesus Christ. See? So as you can see, uh, God did not use any person, any man, any flesh and blood to teach this mystery, to reveal this mystery to the Apostle Paul. It was revealed to him by the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Which leads us to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4. 14 to 15. Uh, four. Now, I underline that because if there was, if I was, uh, um, I just love the wording of the King James Bible. So if you're, not, if you're going to notice with me, there's for, wherefore, and therefore in the next few verses that I'm going to read. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 17. All right? For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them. But he didn't stop there, now did he? And rose again. Now, wherefore? Henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Now, wherefore is another way of saying for this, uh, for the which cause, for this cause. Henceforth is another way of saying from now on. Okay, not tr not correcting uh, the King James Bible. Those are worded perfectly. Just trying to explain or define those words. Wherefore, for the for this cause. What cost? For what cost? That Jesus Christ did not stay dead. He rose up from the dead. He said, for that cost. Henceforth, from now on, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, now, from now on, Know we him no more. Okay? Because the Lord Jesus Christ died, but he did not stay dead, he rose again. Because of that, the Apostle Paul said, from now on, we don't know him after the flesh. We, uh, we know him yeah, we, we knew him. I mean, we read about him that that person, because his ministry was different, we don't know him after the flesh. 
Therefore, watch this, if any man be in Christ, people that are saved after Paul's gospel, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to, or sorry, 15, 1 to 4, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, how many things? Some things? All things are become new. Now, if all things are become new, most of the time some people think that that's just talking about our, you know, our our way of living, or that we're not going to hell anymore, spiritual things. Sure, and I give them that, but that's not all. If it says all things are become new, does that mean the preaching as well? The preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ is not after the old things right now, not after the old things of the prof uh, prophecy program, all things are become new. We're not preaching the Lord Jesus Christ after the flesh. We're not preaching the Lord Jesus Christ when he was healing, um, when he was when he would multiply bread, when he would multiply fish. We're not preaching the Lord Jesus Christ where, where that you know when he's um, changing water into wine. That Jesus Christ cannot save us right now. Because uh, does not save that, sorry, does not save us right now. Why? Because his aim during that time, what he was doing is he was coming, he came to set up a literal earthly kingdom of priests. Right now, that is not what he is doing at all. Can he Raise the dead right now? Of course. Nothing is impossible with God. Can he heal the sick right now? Of course. Can he multiply food? Can he change water into wine? Can he work miracles right now? Yes. Is he, however, doing that right now? No. Because the Christ after the flesh is not what's operational right now. He is, that's not his operation. That's not what he's doing right now. Things we learn from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 to 17. Number one, we live, we live unto him which died for us and rose again. Okay, if the Lord Jesus Christ just stayed dead, then that's a different story now, is it? Because he rose again, we do not know him as he, we knew him back in the flesh. Okay, um, so I remember, uh, yeah, I'm sure some of you, if not all of you, have been to funerals. And when somebody, uh, are, somebody is in, when, when you're in a funeral, most of what people say were the things that this person did while he was in the flesh. Oh, he was such a good man. Oh, I remember when we didn't have anything to eat and, and he, he came by and brought us some food. I remember when I didn't have a job and he hired me. Uh, I remember when, when I didn't even have to ask for help and he came by and helped me. Oh, he's such a good man. And, and we talk about what that person did in the flesh. But see, the Lord Jesus Christ did not stay dead now, did he? He rose again, and by virtue of that rising again, there are things, there are new things that were accomplished. There were new things that were made possible. There was, uh, there, there, there are so many heavenly and spiritual blessings that we gain access to just by believing and being put in Him. And that's why we do not dwell into the thing, into the Lord Jesus Christ of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Sure, those are foundational. We learn from that. We learn from those Bible stories. Those are those are things that uh, uh, you know. It's it's. I'm not you know. It's always a danger to preach these things because uh, a danger, physically speaking. Uh, I should say, because some people would accuse us of saying, well, that Brother Francis, he wants you to tear down Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts 1 to 7, because it's not, 
It's not uh, written to us. We can still learn from that historically and uh, marvel at the wonderful works of God. But when it comes to doctrine and our growth, number one, of course, doctrine of salvation. Number two, the doctrine of our, you know, doctrines that we need for our growth, then it's not, that's not where we get it from. It's not, we don't get that from the Jesus Christ after the flesh. We get it from the Lord Jesus Christ who is alive. And who is the, we know him as the glorified, risen head of the body of Christ. That's not who he was in the flesh. He even tried to tell his apostles, hey, listen, uh, in Luke, Luke chapter number 18, listen, I'm going to go up to Jerusalem. They're going to catch me. They're going to kill me, and I'm going to rise again. And the apostles did not understand any of that at all. So we do not preach him as he was preached by the circumcision or the prophets, the psalmists, the kings, John the Baptist, the apostles, and not even Jesus in his fleshly ministry. That's not how we preach him. Is he God? That's, are, are we saying, am, am I trying to say that when he was here in his earthly ministry or fleshly ministry, that he's not God? No, he is God. He was then, he is now, he will always be God. Am I trying to diminish him? Did he? Am I trying to say that he committed sin back then and not now? No, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say, or not, sorry, rather, what the Bible is trying to say is that he was doing something different then compared to right now. And right now, since we are in the dispensation of grace, therefore we preach Christ, the Christ that is the glorified, risen head of the body, rather than the one that's back there. You know, it's all ooey and gooey and mushy and emotional to preach. It's wonderful. Even I, you know, I love to hear those stories. That's why we start with our, you know, Bible stories with children and, and talk, talk to them about the works of God and talk to them about the whole Bible and, 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 because it's wonderful to hear those stories. But when it comes to salvation and growing in God, growing in Christ, that's not where we get our do doctrines from. It's wonderful, you know. It draws crowds to talk about the emotional things that, you know, that you can feel when, when the preacher says God can, you know, God will heal you or God will 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 provide and God will 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 multiply your bread or or change water into wine oh oh you have cancer God will heal that you know God can but is that what he's doing right now no those are signs that the nation of Israel required now moving forward putting it all together because paul's message is different from the circumcision ours is as well because paul's information was revealed by the glorified risen head of the body jesus christ in heaven therefore the glorified risen head of the body jesus christ in heaven is who we preach not the jesus in his earthly or fleshly ministry Paul's revelation is a new and heavenly revelation. Paul didn't know about it. Or sorry, Peter didn't know about it. James, John did not know about it. Therefore, we do not preach Christ as they did in the Old Testament. Even the Gospels. The Christ in the flesh who came to establish the earthly kingdom. That's who they that's that's the Christ that they preached back then in the Old Testament and or sorry in, in, in the Gospels. 
That's the Christ that they preach, the Christ in the flesh who came to establish the earthly kingdom. And to this day, Christian churches still preach that same fleshly Christ. Why is that dangerous? We'll look at that later on. Now, moving forward, let's go to our pattern preacher. Okay, so this is point number two, so bear with me for a second. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter fifth, chapter 1, verses 15 to 16. Now, this is the verse that says um, that the Apostle Paul is our pattern. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause, excuse me, I obtained mercy that in me first, okay, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now, the word pattern, if for, for those of you who, who've uh, used a sewing kit or made clothes before, you make a pattern first before anything else. You don't cut the cloth. You don't put it together and then say to yourself, oh, so wait a second. I forgot to make the pattern. Let me do that. No, that's the first thing you do. Okay? Uh, for those who build, you don't do, you don't, you don't dig the foundation and, uh, Raise the scaffolding and, you know, put the rebarbs on and then all of a sudden say, oh, wait a sec, we forgot to consult the, the engineers and the, the architects for the pattern or the blueprints. No, that's the very first thing that needs to exist. So the Apostle Paul is our pattern for our faith, for our salvation. He's the, that's why he's the first one into the body of Christ, the church, which is the body of Christ. Uh, but not only that, he is also our pattern when it comes to preaching. He's our pattern preacher. Okay, look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved now by the way in some other bible translations it would say unto us which are being saved it's still progressive that means they haven't gotten it in its entirety yet praise god for the king james bible once you believe the gospel you are saved praise god for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness okay so I always wonder, for anyone, when you start preaching the, the cross work or the work on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously it's going to be foolishness to people who are unsaved. That's why it makes no sense to tailor fit it to them so they'll 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 accept it as something that's oh how pleasant oh what a wonderful preaching pastor i was blessed when they're not saved it means nothing to them but unto us which are saved it is the power of god okay uh verse 21 for after that in the wisdom of God, the world, uh, by wisdom do not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Watch it. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Watch it. We're talking about in our dispensation. Now, I know when the Apostle Paul wrote uh, 1 Corinthians, there were still a little bit of the little flock that existed. 
but that's not what I'm talking about right now. Okay, put yourself in, in our time right now. The Jews require a sign. There are people who require a sign to see if what you're preaching is true. What sign can that be? It could be something that's, well, I will believe you. I'll believe that your God is real. I'll believe that that salvation you're talking about is real. If, I mean, we don't have anything to eat for tonight. If your God is real, is he going to give us some food? Is he going to multiply our bread? Is he going to let our our oil jars pour over? We'll only believe if there's a sign. Okay? And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, earlier, Apostle Paul says that the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. And the, and, and, and the Gentiles, there are some people who would say, you, you know what? I'll believe that, you know, let's not talk about that. That, that cross, that, that the work of Christ in the cross, that just that's just nonsense. It's just foolishness. Talk about talk about some some wisdom. You know? But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. So our pattern preaches Christ's work on the cross. Okay, number one, Paul is not only our apostle, he is also our pattern. He's, his preaching is also our pattern, not just in faith, in his belief, in salvation, in being uh, the member of the body of Christ. His preaching is also our pattern. Preaching starting from Christ's work on the cross his, you know, death, burial, and resurrection, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, is foolishness to the unsaved. There's a sign. I, uh, there was this one church that I went to in California uh, that I preached the gospel. They, they invited me to preach, preach the gospel, and... A few, I can't remember how many now, uh, but a few of their deacons expressed that they did not know if they were saved or not. My question is, they've been deacons there for a long time. What have they been doing all this time? Well, I mean, now praise God for everyone or anyone that gets saved any time of their life. What I'm trying to say is this. When you're, if you're in a church and somebody preaches about the cross work, the work on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, the correct gospel given unto Paul, his death, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, and Christians, or quote-unquote Christians, people who profess to be Christians, think that it's foolishness. There's a big question mark there. I can't see what, what's in their heart. But the Bible defines those people who think of these kinds of preaching as they that perish, meaning they're unsaved. Really, you've been a Christian for a long time, friend, or you claim to have made a profession, or you claim to be a Christian for a long time, and you think that the preaching of the cross is foolishness? That's a big question mark, friend. Preaching next. Number four, preaching that declares earthly signs is wrong. What, what do I mean by that? Like, like my example earlier, people would say, I'll just believe you if, uh, if, if God would heal my child. Can God heal your child? Yes. Is that the program under which he's operating on right now? No. Is that what he's doing right now? No. Can God feed you or provide for you? Yes. Is that what he's doing right now? No. 
Okay? So people would ask for signs, and that they'd say, no, oh, we'll believe only when there are signs. Well, the Jews require a sign. We don't walk by faith, we walk by sight. Or sorry, we, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Preaching that focuses on fleshly wisdom is wrong. Like there, there are so many churches that I visited that it's mostly just uh, the Bible. The Bible defines it as fables, fables, and teachers. You know, just just tickling, itching ears if you will, making people feel good. No doctrine whatsoever. When somebody like you or me, you and me, come along and try to tell to talk to people about doctrine, they walk away. They're turned off. Why? It's foolishness to them. They, they think it's foolishness. Doctrine is foolishness. Oh, here's that right division guy again. To them, it's foolishness. I wonder why you claim to be a Christian and you think doctrine is foolishness, right division is foolishness. Huh. So a lot of people resort to earthly wisdom, philosophy, uh, um, making people laugh or cry, making people feel good, earthly, fleshly wisdom. But... This is just the beginning or the foundation, which what's that? The, the uh, cross of Christ, uh, the work in the cross. Our pattern also warns us to be careful what we build on that foundation, on the foundation. Watch in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Still there? According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Who's that me? That's the Apostle Paul. He's the wise master builder. I, Apostle Paul, have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. See? I have laid the foundation. Who's that? That's the Apostle Paul. What's, um, what's that foundation? We saw earlier, uh, other foundation can no man lay. Then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our foundation. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. See, the Apostle Paul laid our foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Some people would rather go back to the Old Testament or back to the prophecy program or back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to build on that foundation. And that's even if they got the correct foundation at all. Meaning, it's awesome. It's great if people got the correct foundation. It's great if people got saved. Praise God for everyone and anyone that gets saved. But some people that are saved stop there. Then they go back. They go back to the Old Testament. They go back to the prophecy program. They go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and build on that foundation from the prophecy program. Which brings us to our slide earlier. God's will for all men be stable. Romans 16, 25, what are the two stipulations? Paul's gospel to be so you can be saved. After that, don't stop there. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Not just any preaching of Jesus Christ. Not preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was in the flesh. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, parallel. What's the will of God? For all men to be saved. After that, don't stop there. How are we saved right now? The gospel, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Believe in that gospel, then you will be saved. After that, don't stop there. Come unto the knowledge of the truth. Same thing, parallels 1 Corinthians 3, verses 10 to 11. The foundation laid by Paul, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But then after that, 
after you have the correct foundation, after you're saved, don't stop there. Let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. Are you going to build on the Lord? You're saved. Don't stop there. Praise God, you're saved. But now that you have the correct foundation, are you going to are you going to build on that foundation by grabbing stuff from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, by grabbing stuff from Hebrews, by grabbing stuff from from uh, Revelation or the Old Testament and applying it to yourself? Take heed how he built it up thereupon. Okay. You need to build on that foundation by listening or by, by the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Then you come unto the knowledge of the truth. So, to sum it up, if you will, the faith, uh, if you find it up, if you find uh, that term, the faith, mentioned by the Apostle Paul, uh, of course, this depends on the context. We're not talking about, you know, the faith of Christ, which gives us justification. That's not what we're talking about. The faith mentioned by the Apostle Paul, like when he says earnestly, can, uh, uh, oh, sorry, not that, but uh, um, that which you see in me do, um, things like that. The faith mentioned by the Apostle Paul is that body of information unique to his teaching because it was revealed to him. Look at Galatians 3.23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. See? Um, before this was revealed to the Apostle Paul, we were shut up unto this faith. We did not have access to it, if you will. Ephesians 4.13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Um... Sorry for the for the typographical error there. Collisions, not collisions. Colossians 2, 6, and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the, what? In the faith. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Thanks. And then 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We'll define what that doctrine of devils is here in a bit. Now, uh, there's only nine more slides to go, so please bear with me. Okay, let's put it all together. Number one, the Apostle Paul is our pattern. Okay. Number two, he laid the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Now that you have to get. If you don't get that, if you don't get his gospel, if you don't get the correct gospel, you have the wrong foundation. Everything else you will not get right. Next. Everyone needs to get the foundation right. Like I said, if you get that wrong, you'll get everything else wrong. And if by chance you try to read something and you get something right, it still does not matter because you're not you're when you die, you're still going to hell. Then, after you get the foundation right, we need to be careful how we build on our foundation. Typo again, I'm sorry about that. How we build on our foundation. We need to build in accordance to the faith that the Apostle Paul imparted to us. Don't get from uh, don't get doctrine that's apply that's applicable to a different time, a different period, and apply it to us. If that's not preaching the Lord Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. This the faith includes the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. 
Now, point number three, last but not the least, some examples to consider. Now, notice how they preach um, in Matthew chapter number 10. Now, this is the gospel, and see if this is the same way, sorry, that we preach right now. Matthew chapter number 10, I'm going to start in verse number 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Question, is this how we preach right now? Is there a distinction of people that we can go and we cannot go right now to preach? No. Why? Because this is true. It's in the Bible. You can see it. It's in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 6. You can see it before your very eyes. It's biblical. But it's not for our time right now. Okay? That's why we have to rightly divide the word of truth. Next, verse number 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is that what we preach right now? No. We preach the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Right? Do we preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand? No. And it says, continuing, verse number 8, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Are, are any of these bad? On the contrary, it's awesome. It's great. Praise God for anyone that is healed. But this is not what we're doing right now. These are all sign gifts, signs that the Jews rep, uh, require. Freely you have received. Freely give. Why? Uh, why are these sensational things required by the Jews? Because God promised them. All the way back in, in Exodus, Moses said, Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. That's why they walk by sight. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Provide neither gold nor silver. <coughs> Excuse me. Nor brass in your purses. Nor script for your journey. Neither two coats. <coughs> neither shoes nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. <coughs> Verse number 11. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy. Is that what we do right now? And there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. Is that what we do right now? No. Are there churches right now that do, that do this? Yes. Are they supposed to be doing this? No. Next. Verse 14. Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust or your feet, of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Excuse me. So, I'll, let, I'll be honest with you. When I was in Bible college, there was a a preacher, a former pastor, who said, um, "You know, every Saturday we would ha we would go out and two by two and go soul winning, knock on doors." And um, he said, "If somebody does not receive you, shake off the dust of your feet." See how inappropriate or misapplied this biblical truth is when he told us to dust our feet off? So, it's just an example of how some churches still do this today.
But this is not how we preach. We're not supposed to preach. This is how the apostles preach. The 12 apostles led by Peter, they're not our pattern. Who's our pattern? The apostle Paul is our pattern. Now go to 1 Timothy chapter number 4. Almost done. Uh, three more slides or two more slides. Uh, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay, so watch the doctrines of devils. What what's the doctrine of devils? I thought devils are involved in um, you know. Um, going into somebody's body and possessing them and stuff like that. That's not what the devils are um, doing right now. That's not what they're concerned of with right now. What they're concerned with right now is speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their, uh, uh, sorry, having their co conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Question, was there a time when God command people to abstain from meats? Yes, it's called the Old Testament law. Okay, mm. there are some meats especially the unclean meats that are not to be eaten, are not to be taken. So it's biblical. Then why is it doctrine of devils, Brother Francis? Because doctrines of devils is, uh, is defined as the misapplication of doctrine, although they're correct or biblical for another period, it's misapplied into our period or dispensation. So you, can you see those examples? You see how um, the, our preaching is supposed to be uh, patterned after the Apostle Paul's preaching, uh, the way he preached and what he preached instead of just being all over the place. Now, to summarize, um, the revelation of the mystery. Mystery, uh, the word mystery is defined as hidden wisdom, but the content of the mystery in question over here is that, um, that the Gentiles be fellow heirs uh, in the same body, so there's no more distinction. It's called the new creature, the new man. But also the revelation of the mystery, we talked about it, how, how, um, how the Apostle Paul was not taught by men. He did not pattern his preaching after man. It's, it's something that was revealed to him by the Lord Jesus Christ while he was out in the wilderness. And, of course, our pattern is the Apostle Paul. So our pattern when it comes to what he preaches and the way uh, or who he preaches, the, the Lord Jesus Christ that he preach, preaches is not the Lord Jesus Christ after the flesh, but the Lord Jesus Christ who is the risen and the glorified head of the body the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Then we also look at some examples to consider. So I know that was a little bit of a long uh, Bible study there, but I hope that it was a blessing to you. Um, and thank you for listening. Please make no mistake about it, friends, uh, brethren in Christ. When we say that or when I say that God does not heal or Jesus Christ does not heal um, or does not provide by multiplying the bread that's in your pantry right now, I do not mean to say that he cannot do that anymore. Or I, cannot, I do not mean to say that he's not powerful enough to do that. He can 
He can if he wants to, but that's not what he's doing anymore. That's not the program under which he operates at this time. It'll come back after um, the, the body of Christ is caught away, but that's not the program under which uh, we are right now. So I know it, uh, what we talked about is not very uh, popular uh, with people who call themselves Christians, but um, there's a reason why a lot of people are not, a lot of Christians are not stable in Christ. And that's because they try to feast from just anywhere in the Bible and try to apply to our time today what's supposed to be for another time. And that's why people are unstable. I hope it has been a blessing to you. Uh, look for a church that preaches Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Look for a preacher or a Bible study or fellow Christians that you can fellowship with that preaches the Lord Jesus Christ according to the mystery. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen, friends, brethren in Christ. I hope it, this has been a blessing to you. Um, again, uh, we are on Facebook. TPF 1611 or the Pauline Fellowship 1611. We're also on Instagram, and you can definitely look for us over there, the Pauline Fellowship, or hashtag TPF 1611. And like we said during the beginning, we're on um, YouTube. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that button so you know whenever a new video comes up. Um, we're also uh, on Apple, Spotify, Google, um and Amazon uh for the Workman Unashamed podcast. Finally, if you have any questions or concerns, uh questions, even questions that you want us to answer online or do a Bible study on. Uh if you have any um uh reactions, whether they're good or bad, please feel free to send that over to the Pauline Fellowship at gmail.com our goal here is not to name names or to embarrass anyone online uh it's just to try to be a blessing to somebody um so please don't hesitate to send us a a line over here at the pauline fellowship all right so once again my name is brother francis simeon and uh, this is the pauline fellowship bible study hour i'll see you next time